We cannot move up unless there is someone to take the place from which we have moved, right? I am having several problems with this. I've not given it any effort because I'm not interested in changing the dynamics of our group and I've not seen any interest in this walk from others outside this group. As I think about this, I see that I attract this situation to myself because of my thinking. I'd better change my thinking. <laughs> Please, may I have more light on this issue? Well, I don't know if you may have more light on this issue or not, saying as I'm not the lighthouse. Light, your consciousness, has nothing to do with me. Your consciousness has to do with you. It's up to you to expand your consciousness. It's up to you to raise your level of being. And what you tell me here in the first part of your question is that you don't want to do that. I'm having several problems with this. I've not given it any effort because I'm not interested in changing the dynamics of our group. If you're not interested in changing the dynamics of our group, you're not interested in moving forward. You're not ex interested in expanding your consciousness. You're not interested in raising your level of being. In other words, you have come to the sobering realization that we all need to come to. We don't want anything to change. We want everything to stay the same. We want it all to stay the way it is because we're comfortable with this no matter how bad it is. Yesterday we talked to Rex about his life, just in general. What his life is like and how can he allow it to just stay like this? Why doesn't he want to move forward, get beyond where he is, that this is no way to live life. And his answer was basically that he was afraid of changing anything because it might get worse. So it doesn't really matter how bad things are. What the false personality threatens us with is it could be worse. And so we find ourselves settling for less and staying in the same rut staying in the same mechanical habit patterns because it could be worse. Let me tell you this, in this work, if you do this work, if you apply these ideas, now I understand that most people will not, that most people, this is just intellectual entertainment. I can be funny, I can be clever, I have ideas that sound nice and wonderful and oh isn't that right and oh that's so true and oh yes that's just so beautiful and oh he has such a wonderful vision of the world and blah 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 and we find we just make this intellectual entertainment the truth is is very few people will actually apply these ideas that's the sad truth and they won't apply the ideas because they don't want anything to change they like it the way it is and they're not willing to risk it getting worse but I promise you that if you apply this work, it will get worse. It will get worse. Your life will get worse. You are going to have to deal with all those things that you have been putting off, all those things that you've been hiding, all those things that you've been running away from, all those things that you've been resisting, all those things that you've been lying about. All of those things are put into the closet of your internal being. They have been stuffed in the dark corners. And this work is about turning the lights on inside of yourself and seeing the very horrible things that were inappropriate that you stuffed in those dark corners and in those closets and in the basement of yourself. So I promise you that you stuffed them there for a reason, because you had judged them to be inappropriate, bad and wrong, because you could not measure up to accepting the truth about yourself because you could not deal with it because you had too many judgments and too much condemnation going on about it, about those things. Now, you learned, this is all learned experience. This is all acquired from outside of yourself. So other people taught you how to make yourself inappropriate, bad and wrong. But you accepted it because you wanted to survive. And those other people were feeding you or caring for you or loving you or approving of you or not approving of you. And you thought as a child you would die if those people Stop doing that. And you know what? You may well have. We see that child abuse, at least in our country, is pretty crazy. And it's because we have power over small people, little people. Big people have power over little people. And we exercise that power with impunity. And until there have been some laws that started to say, no, you can't do this. Just because you have the power doesn't mean it's right to do it. And so people started to stand up for people, the smaller people who couldn't stand up for themselves. People started to get it and see, 
this isn't right. This is wrong. Just because you have power doesn't mean that it's wise to exercise it on other people just for your own self-gratification. What Gurdjieff called this was hasnamas. That is, someone whose well-being depends on the not well-being of another person. In other words, a parasite, a vampire, a bloodsucker. You live off of other people's misery. You get your nourishment from other people's misery. No, we don't ever see what we're doing that way. Oh, that's, that's not, I'm doing it for their good. Everything we do is always for someone else's good. We're so selfless and altruistic. It's amazing. And we buy this trash. We, we swallow this trash. And this is what Jesus was talking about. We're like, well, you strain out gnats, but you swallow camels. These huge discrepancies in ourselves. We just swallow them whole. But then we'll find little nitpicky little gnats with other people. Oh, there's a little gnat flying around you. And we, we zero in on that. And we are all about that. We are all kinds of judgmental about that. And we can make them wrong about that. Well, we're swallowing these camels in ourselves. The bottom line is we don't want to grow. We don't want to expand because it may cost us something. And what this work says is, yes, your worst fear is now upon you. It's going to cost you. This work is going to cost you. It's going to cost you everything. And, you're and if you want to do it, and if you want to develop, and if you want to expand, and if you want to be all that you can be, it's going to cost you everything that you have. Jesus said it another way. There was a man who collected pearls, and he found the pearl, this one pearl of great price, that was better than all the other pearls he's ever found. he'd ever found. So he went and sold everything that he had and bought that pearl. This work is the pearl of great price. Your development, your spiritual development is the pearl of great price. Only someone who has come to the point in life where they realize that this pearl is of value, can they sell everything that they have to get it. Otherwise, people will go, who cares about that? I'd rather have this. I want that. I want to buy a disco club and, and I, I need to get this bar over here you know, re remodeled so we can make more money. And I want to go to, I want to go to Europe and, 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 uh, you know, there's a great place in Paris that I haven't been to yet. And I want to do this and I want to do that. And they're, they're just full of all kinds of life aims. And so selling those to get this pearl, what good is this pearl? I mean, really, what good is a pearl? Think about it. What good is a pearl? It's not like gold. It's not like a diamond. It's not hard like a diamond. A pearl, you step on a pearl, that's it. It's over. It's dead. It's gone. It's pearl dust. What can a pearl really be used for? Adornment? Beauty? Well, I can get a lot more beauty for a lot less money. And that kind of thinking will undermine this work every time. This is not about quantity. This is about quality. The quality of your being is more important than the quantity of your knowledge. People miss this all the time in this work. We think that if we can gather enough knowledge, then we'll be something better. And that's a lie. Knowledge in and of itself doesn't make anyone better. What you have to come to terms with is your life needs to change, period. You need to change. You need to change. You are not wired correctly. You're wired improperly. And because you're wired improperly, you don't want other people to have this work. You do not value what this work is trying to do. What this work wants to do is give man an opportunity to escape this horrible place that he's in in the universe under 48 orders of laws, where he can't do anything, really. He's just a mechanical function of life. He's at the effect of everything. And he's creating more and more misery every moment of his life for himself and everyone in the world. But because we don't see this and we don't value the escape, we don't value the way out, we don't care about other people. Because we don't see our connectedness. We don't see that their misery is our misery. Because we don't see that, we don't do anything for them. The problem is us. Oh, wow, you'd be uncomfortable if the dynamics of the group changed. Boo-hoo. God forbid that you should be uncomfortable. And so you have condemned yourself to stay the same, except that you can't stay the same. You will either go forward 
or you will go backward. You're either on an ascending octave or a descending octave, but no one can stay in the same place. You can't stay in the same place because life will not allow it. The flow of life carries you toward its aim, its goal, or you swim against it to another aim and another goal. This work is about how to swim against it to a different aim, to a different goal. But life in and of itself will carry you to its end, what it wants, its goal. And that's not your development. It doesn't care about your development any more than it cares about an amoeba's development. You are meaningless to life outside of your function in life, which is to be food for something else. Wake up. You do need to change your thinking. And you already know that. So instead of asking me to do something for you and give you more light, what you need to do is change your thinking. Oh, but that's hard. Well, yeah. And you just wanted me to just do it for you? Is that it? You just wanted me to wave my magic wand and suddenly your thinking would be changed? And because I won't do it, I'm a bad person? And that's really what you think. I mean, if you'll, if you'll be honest with yourself, you will see that you have spent years here thinking exactly that. He'll do it. He's, he's much more disciplined than I. He'll do it. And then I'll benefit from it. Well, yes, you will benefit from it. Some of it's gonna, some of it's gonna rub off. It's true. It's just like if you're cold and people huddle together, their body warmth helps each other. So yes, you'll, you'll get benefit from my progress, but it's not the same as your progress. And what happens when I'm gone? Well, then what do you do? <laughs> what happens if everybody's cold, and, but then people all get separate? Well, they get cold again. Why? Because you need to find how to generate it inside of yourself.